Hey, good afternoon. How's everybody? I'm fine. Thanks, hey, uh, how are you, Dexton? How are you? Good afternoon, Professor. How are you? How are you, Eva? How are I'm you, Peter? Well. Good, good. Let's see. Um, um, it looks like I have seven people here in the uh, collaborate session. I'll just check. <clears throat> um, and I hope you have all um, uh, signed into uh, the discussion board because um, I, I I bring this point home every every session, every class that um, um, the discussion board is your physical uh, proof of your attendance. So I have uh, actually uh, eight people there. So, and if I have, um, uh, I'm, I'm still missing one person uh, in the collaborate because I have eight in the, uh, um, uh, what's that, uh, today's forum discussion board, right? So I, uh, hoping, you know, um, uh, one more person will join uh, shortly and also, I want to uh, bring it to your attention that uh, in the, uh, let's say, um, uh, there is another, um, hope you have already uh, noticed this, because uh, it was, it went out, where is this? I, I don't know. What is a... Oh yeah, there's there's another one, right? Another practice test. Have you guys all noticed this? Have you? Uh, the email went out uh, as of uh, the email went out on Monday, right? So everyone is aware of this. RY practice. Yeah, I saw it today okay. actually. Okay, uh, it's gonna be. Uh, yes, I saw it. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. It's gonna be. Uh, so it's gonna be on uh, from uh, this Friday, right? So again, you have like three day window, and uh, you have this time there are fifty problems, but all multiple choice. Uh, so. You will have 180 minutes. Okay. All righty. So let me get back to again. Let's see how many are there. So nine people. So I will. I need to see nine people here, but not. I don't. I see only seven people. Okay. Now, so I want to. Uh, so we were talking about the uh, uh, the role of the Federal Reserve. Uh, in our last class, and the um, of course this is all you know what's in the you know basically you know textbook. In every textbook they will talk about you know the the dual mandate of you know a Federal Reserve uh, being the central bank. They have the uh, duty to uh, 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 keep the uh, inflation low, and you know. Um, uh, maintain the uh, uh, full employment. Of course, full employment. Uh, full employment is not 100% employment because there is natural rate of unemployment. There is natural rate of unemployment. Natural rate of unemployment is in the U.S. economy is about 4.5%. And the natural rate of unemployment is um, not uh, uh, simply to to put it simply, it's not because um, th there is um, people want to work but there is no job. But you know there there are uh, there are people that always. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, because there was a lot of background noise. Uh, uh, it's not from your end, from my end. I don't know what, what is going on. You know, it's almost like a uh, jet bomber is passing by. <laughs> um, so um, if people, uh, there are people who don't work simply because they are either, you know, lazy or unwilling or whatever. Uh, there is, you know, natural rate of unemployment. And, you know, uh, it's usually... Um, uh, not because of you know unwillingness, but also there is you know a structural structural reason, structural change you know in the economy, or there is you know a seasonal seasonal um, seasonality. Um, uh, there are uh, about four four five reasons for a natural rate of unemployment. Of course, unwillingness to work it being one, uh, or you're between jobs, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, structural reason, um, the, the kind of jobs, the type of jobs that you used to work in in the, in the past uh, have been eliminated from the economy because the structural, there has been structural change in the economy. Um, these are the reasons of uh, natural rate of unemployment. And in the U.S. economy, it is considered to be about 4.5%. So it's not the... Uh, uh, full employment is not 100% employment. You you gotta uh, keep that in mind. Um, so that's the dual mandate of the Federal Reserve: um, the low um, moderate inflation. I mean, I, I wouldn't say you know a low inflation, uh, which is you know considered uh, uh, to be you know um, moderate, and that is you know um, that's one. Uh, so price stability. And the uh, full employment, that's the dual mandate. Um, and I've told you, uh, moderate inflation is not a bad thing. Moderate inflation, especially if it is demand pull. Uh, inflation coming from the demand side, demand pull, due to a strong demand, uh, uh, it's a good inflation if it is an Federal Reserve, if it is around 2%, and that's the Federal Reserve's target uh, inflation rate. And uh, uh, the reason um, uh, the reason it is a, a, a good inflation is um, uh, an economy without inflation is a dead economy, if you think about it, right? Uh, now think about it. Uh, it the inflation can be caused by one of the two reasons. One, uh, strong demand, right? Strong demand will always push up the price. And strong demand comes from the increased income. Think about it. Income, uh, if your income uh, uh, is increasing by 10% annually, then your spending will go up too. On average, your spending will go up also, you know, by on average 10%. So that's strong demand, and obviously a price level will have to go up, right? And uh, so, um, but you know, if it is going up like you know uh, 5%, 6%, 7%, 10%, that's a cr that's uh, accelerated inflation. That's high inflation, right? That's that's not. Uh, uh, that's not, you know, obviously a good thing for the economy, but about 2% inflation is a sign of vibrant economy, sign of vibrant economy, right? And I showed you uh, last time, I'm sure um, I shared um, overall inflation data, right? And um, uh, since, uh, uh, since 2000, Eight uh, when there was a you know, financial crisis, I mean, two th financial crisis, full blown financial crisis, uh, 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 like we had a, a full blown financial crisis somewhere around you know middle of 2008, and you might wonder why in 2008, look at the inflation that was all you know like five percent, four percent, how come? Uh, look. Um, this inflation was calculated by dividing the um, 
uh, uh, 2008 CPU by 2007 CPU. So every month um, you will see uh, still uh, uh, the positive inflation and you know greater than 2% inflation because this is the result of simply dividing uh, uh, you know, um, 2008 CPI by 2007 CPI. But by 2009, you will see inflation turned uh, even from like, you know, this is like November, November of 2008. The, you know, uh, inflation went down. Inflation got quite tamed, right? And then in uh, 2009, you see it was, you know, very low and even in negative range, right? Negative inflation means, you know, uh, what? Deflation, it means deflation, okay? Negative inflation is deflation. That means economy was shrinking, right? The size of the economy was Isn't shrinking. Isn't disinflation worse than inflation? I think I remember hearing that somewhere. No, 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 no. Uh, inflation, uh, deflation is worse than, uh, of course, disinflation because disinflation is still inflation. But you know, um, uh, disinflation simply means the in uh, the speed of inflation is abating, right? Acceleration of inflation is abating. For example, you see disinflation in. Like this is disinflation, right? Inflation was 2.6, but that 2.1, 1.1, right? So 2% level inflation is going down to 1% uh, level inflation. That's disinflation. Okay, understand? So inflation, speed of inflation or acceleration um, of inflation is abating. It's getting... Um, Disinflation is still inflation. So if if you are seeing disinflation from like 5% range to 2% range, then it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing because 5% inflation is crazy. It's, you know, uh, actually, you know, not a very, it's, uh, uh, if inflation is getting to something like 6% range, you know, it's already um, very high. But if inflation is around 2%, it's tamed. Infl it's, it's like, you know, um, minimal inflation that is needed to, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, minimal inflation uh, needed to keep the economy growing. Because, um, I, as I said, uh, about 2% inflation is the sign of vibrant economy, right? Uh, because that means demand is uh, uh, strong. Demand is, you know, strong, okay? Um, but, you know, um, uh, so 2009, you see, you know, it's inflation is negative, so it's uh, deflation. And then, you know, uh, uh, you see then the, uh, uh, oh, why is it? From now, then take a look from here, right? From that's November and December. November and December of um, 2009, uh, the inflation came back to positive range, right? Positive range. Uh, and of course, this is first half of the year, second half of the year, the full year, right? And then, uh, uh, in 2010, the inflation got back to like, you know, a positive range and about 2% range. And the economy bottomed out actually in 2010. How do we know? Um, look, the, uh, uh, the economy, uh, the inflation got turned positive from November of uh, 2009. And then to tell whether the uh, economy uh, made a turnaround or not, we need the data for at least two consecutive quarters, two consecutive quarters. So um, this is the first quarter of January, February, March of 2010. And then uh, 
first quarter, and you know, April, June, April, May, June, second quarter. But actually, by April, I mean, because it started to turn positive from November, right? So three months, November, December, January, and then uh, Feb, three months, another three months, so two quarters. So that means by the end of April 2010, the economy bottomed out. Okay, it never took, inflation uh, didn't turn, I mean, a, a couple of times, 2015, it turned, you know, uh, uh, negative uh, a couple of months, but, you know, generally the, that means, you know, economy uh, uh, started to uh, recover from the uh, uh, recession. Okay, so, uh, and the inflation never, since then, it didn't exceed 2%. I mean, there were a couple of times when it exceeded 2%. But you know, on annual on annual scale, on annual level, uh, only you know uh, this year, which is you know 2018, uh, that was the the only year uh, on annual level um, the inflation exceeded two percent. Now, I know um, 2021. Uh, there were a couple of uh, several months since you know March the inflation has uh, uh, drastically uh, uh, inflation has drastically grown and then you know uh, uh, I have data only until July only up to July but you know look June Ju um, uh, this is May May June July all you know flirting all flirting with five percent level that's already very high right it's already very high level and the first half first half of you know uh, 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 this year is you know uh, 3.37 so uh, overall you know first half average of the first half was still not that you know high 3.37 but still uh, higher than the uh, Federal Reserve's target inflation level, right? Um, and the reason I'm talking about this is uh, because what is a good inflation and what is a bad inflation? I mean, I, I told you already, if it is a demand pull inflation and if it is just about 2% range, uh, it's a good inflation because it's the sign of, you know, strong economy, strong demand increase, right? Strong demand comes from, you know, uh, uh, income, uh, strong income, right? Income increase. So that's the first, you know, um, uh, cause of inflation. Second cause of inflation is cost push, right? It's pushed by the cost. The price level is pushed by the cost. And um, yeah, we are we are currently having actually. This is not a good inflation because it's all, you know, due to cost push. Understand? Because um, uh, since, uh, professor, yeah, I'm, yeah, professor. yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm listening. Who, yeah, who's I'm finally, that? I'm finally able to join. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I was uh, the one. Yanni, I, was Yanni. The I was the student. Okay, welcome, welcome. Well, um, welcome. <laughs> yeah, they finally um. BMCC finally gave me like a new email, so now I could finally like create backboard and join. Yeah, I got the class back. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, because I, I, I thought. You, mm -hmm. No, no, I don't. I don't think. Uh, did they actually give you a new email? I think you just. It, it's the same email. It's just that uh, you didn't have. You just lost the access to the blackboard because of you know, um, you know, long absence, right? Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. And um, yeah, yeah. So you know, you, you just the reactivated all of that. So they reactivated it. From yeah, yeah. They just, I think, they just reactivated your uh, access. All right, welcome. But don't forget to uh, 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 don't forget to sign into the uh, uh, discussion board. Okay, mm -hmm. because today's because this is the only um, attendance. 
the way you take yeah this is minutes. the physical this is the physical proof of your attendance because um, I won't uh, because you you spoke to me and uh, um, uh, you spoke to me about you now spoke to me about the um, uh, reactivation of your account I I, I, I might remember most you know most likely but uh, mm -hmm. If you just join the collaborate and without leaving any physical proof of your attendance here, I wouldn't know. Okay? Yeah. So you don't, and if, if I don't see your record here, you will right. lose because you won't be marked present. You will lose 0 0.167 point for attendance. Okay? Well, I see it. Yeah. Please. Okay. All righty. Uh, anyway, welcome to, uh, uh, welcome back. Now, uh, Peter Peter asked, "What percentage would be considered hyperinflation?" Now, hyperinflation is actually um, uh, there. There's no um, hyperinflation is really, really, <laughs> you know, exaggerated inflation. I mean, uh, um, post World War Two, post World War One Germany. Post World War One, Germany had you no know, like inflation of like one thousand percent, you know, um, ten thousand um, percent, uh, and back in early two thousands, um, was it Colombia or no 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 uh, El Salvador or what what uh, believe? What about Venezuela today? Venezuela, Venezuela, and it wasn't that long ago, right? It was like you know two thousand twelve, two thousand. They had like you know uh, ten thousand percent inflation. Or so. That's called hyperinflation. That means you know your currency is basically nothing. Nobody accepts your even in your own country. They you know uh, you don't accept your own currency. Um, so hyperinflation. I mean, if it is look, um, uh, there is no. So it's just a, a an expression. They. Uh, the expression they give to a very high inflation. So inflation is already high if it is, you know, uh, above like six percent, right? Um, but um, uh, if it is, uh, if you have ten percent inflation, that's high inflation. They don't call it hyperinflation, but if it is like, you know. Um, uh, 20 percent you know uh, then it already 20 percent 30 percent it would already fall into hyperinflation range because the inflation like that that economy is obviously uh, not growing uh, it, it, it's mainly because of you know uh, uh, too much money supply for the production capacity of that economy okay and also everything, um, and I was explaining uh, another cause of inflation is the cost push. And the cost push is because of the um, uh, in, uh, sudden shock in the input cost, sudden shock in, in the input cost. Um, and the input cost and uh, the inflation we are experiencing currently is uh, mostly due to um, mostly due to the uh, 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 high input cost, and the, this high input cost uh, is caused by the uh, supply chain dis uh, disruption. Supply chain disruption, um, not because you know, um, but you know, back in the 1970s, I must have uh, mentioned you know. Um, uh, Middle East wars, Middle East wars, you know, um, in back in 1970, and the uh, ensuing uh, or resulting, you know, oil supply, oil shock, right? Oil supply shock back in the uh, 1970s. Um, um, oil, you know, um, you might wonder, you know, um, what does oil have to do with? I mean, you know. Uh, Oil is for transportation and heating, you know. Uh, uh, so maybe gas prices may go up, but that one, you know, would that why would it have to? Um, um, first of all, oil is the lifeblood of the uh, modern economy, right? Because manufacturing, 
manuf manufacturing is the uh, you know center of in, you know industrial economy and all manufacturing uses uh, power the electricity right all manufacturing uh, is heavily dependent on electricity and um, if electricity um, so and think about it power generation electricity is mainly produced by uh, the power plants that burn fossil fuel right you might think in the US uh, we have you know different sources of you know uh, power generation like you know a hydropower plant or you know windmills you know solar panels you know uh, geothermal or tidal power yeah we have different sources of power generation but they are still I'm pretty sure the US is like the largest uh, oil producing country in the world right now I heard I heard about that recently yeah yeah US is actually the largest you know uh, uh, the largest oil, biggest oil producer in the world, actually. And we have, we're just not, we're not just, you know, exploiting our resources. We are just keeping it. Um, we have a lot of reserve. U.S. has a lot of reserve. You know, uh, uh, have you guys uh, heard of, you know, Shell, Shale, Shale Oil? Shale, yeah. Not the uh, oil company Shell, that. but Shale is like a uh, uh, you know, very right. shallow. Yeah, shallow, you know, uh, seabed, you know, in the uh, off coast, right? And the uh, in so in the uh, um, uh, off coast, um, what should I say? Um, shallow seabed of the uh, U.S. Is that what fracking is about, or something like that? I think that's what fracking. Well, fracking is inland. Fracking is what they do inland. Oh. Right, but shale is, you know. Uh, um, uh, anyway, you know, you have to dig, right? You have to uh, bore the, uh, you make, you have to uh, dig a hole in the ground to, uh, you know, pump up the oil, right? But um, um, shale, I think, you know, any country that has oil reserve, oil field in the sea, right? Like North Sea, um, Scotland has, you know, uh, UK and uh, Norway has you know uh, this oil field in the North Sea and countries that have and US also has you know uh, um, uh, uh, offshore you know uh, drilling right um, and um, in offshore but US has a lot of oil reserve uh, the shale oil you know in the uh, coastal uh, uh, seabed right uh, but US isn't just you know uh, uh, drilling up uh, pumping up all those oil uh, uh, just, you know, reserving it or, you know, um, there's, you know, uh, environmental uh, uh, concern as well. But, you know, uh, when the oil runs out <laughs> in OPEC countries, U.S. will still have oil, you know. Uh, that that shell oil was discovered in uh, during the Obama uh, administration. And uh, I remember, you know, uh, somewhere, you know, uh, uh, Obama... Uh, in his one of his you know uh, speeches, he said, uh, "We have um, oil. Uh, we have plenty of oil to even you know if, uh, last for more than 200 years if we you know uh, pump up all the oil." Um, so, yeah, U.S. has the uh, largest you know um, oil reserve. Uh, uh, that's still you know underground. Um, and even fracking, if we consider fracking, you know, uh, um, uh, even in Pennsylvania they have, but you know, um, fracking is bad for the environment, uh, bad for the underground water, and also it can uh, disturb the uh, underground system. You know, um, uh, I, I I believe you know uh, some of if it affects the underground water system, you know, then it will it will result in sinkholes somewhere, right? If you uh, if you disrupt the balance, um, it will it will come up, you know, it will come out as you know uh, sinkholes, you know. <laughs> so it's not good to. Uh, so fracking has a lot of you know uh, environmental uh, issues. Um, but then, uh, where was I? Um, yeah, uh, oil is the lifeblood of the uh, 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 the economy. Why? Because in the uh, 
are every if you think about it every manufacturing every manufacturing uh, uses you know electricity <clears throat> and the electricity generation depends largely on power uh, fossil fossil fuel burning power plants and as i said you know although we have different other types of power generation technologies like you know solar panel uh, windmills you know hydropower plants they don't i i believe they take up not even like you know uh five percent professor yeah i will have to look i will have to look up but they don't take you know even five percent of the uh, entire power generation of the u.s uh, so uh at least, you know, more than more than 80% of the power generation in the U.S. is still dependent on uh, fossil fuel burning power plants, and the uh, um, the majority it's it's either coal burning or oil burning, right? And uh, in the U.S., there there are more oil burning power plants than coal burning power plants, and that's you know uh, if I remember correctly. So then you know then think about it. Uh, oil price affects the uh, uh, the entire economy across the board. Okay, so when oil price goes up, the price of every uh, everything goes up because um, and that that's what happened in the uh, uh, 70s. Yes, yeah, someone was trying to say something. I'm sorry, I I I, I couldn't get. Yeah, it's this. me, professor. I'm sorry for trying to yeah. put you off. Um, I'm 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 in the Blackboard thing, right? I I'm in the, I click on the discussion board, and then like who who is who is who is this? It's Adewale. Adewale, okay. Yeah. Adewale. Mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I click on the discussion board, right? And I'm trying to find where to type, but it doesn't shows me no. No, no, no. Look, look here. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you do you see this? Um, which one? No, 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 I'm, I'm pointing, my mouth, the cursor is pointing at. Oh, create, create thread, thread. Right? On this cut huh? board. Yeah, create yeah, mine, thread. Mine doesn't show yeah. that, it just shows formula, and that's it. And what? It shows, I'm going to email it to you, like what it shows on my screen. Or if I could share, could I, is it possible? No, 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 look, 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 look. Mm -hmm. But do you see, do you see the uh, list of names here? People have signed in like this. Do you see that? Nah. It just shows the no? question. What do you mean? Right, you so I, I click on discussion you, board, right? Yeah, that's no, no, what no, I click no. yeah. Can you click on that? Look, look, discussion board, yes. right? Uh huh. Do you see class? Yes. September twenty first. Yes. You click on that. And then create trend, right? So you are here now. You can see this. All right. Thank you so much. I got it now. Thank no, 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 no. You're you're there. You, yeah, you can see answer, this, right? Just answer. And you saw board. this. You saw right. this, right? Mm -hmm. And click on that, and don't don't do anything. Uh, don't just put your last name, comma, first name. All right. That's and enough. Then, last answer. name, comma, first name. All right. Okay. Yeah. And All right. Three questions, and, right? And then and then submit. And then All right. submit. Thank you. Thank okay? you. Yeah. All right. So where was I? Um. Yeah. Uh. And. Um, that's basically supply side shock. That's called supply shock because on the supply side, uh, input cost uh, input cost went up. Input cost went up because uh, just like oil, you know, uh, the in input uh, oil is a uh, uh, you know um, part. Of, you know, uh, uh, great um, oil is a very critical part critical input right because it's not the it may not be direct input but you know it is it it is involved in everything uh, but again um, early this year uh, since like you know uh, March inflation went up because there was a, a supply side uh, supply shock uh, because of the supply chain disruption supply chain disruption parts and materials that were supposed to be delivered uh, up to a certain date. Um, you have, a, for example, a, a, com a computer manufacturer like Dell, they have production schedule, right? Production must start uh, on April 1st, but you know, part seven arrived. Part seven arrived, right? Uh, and you may have heard the news that, you know, a lot of, you know, electric uh, Tesla has production schedule uh, 
uh, disrupted because you know batteries haven't arrived, <laughs> and uh, and why? Because you know container ships, you know the cargo ships, you know um, uh, they are uh, they have you know uh, the semiconductor shortage too. Yeah, semiconductor shortage due to you know uh, uh, they can't find you know freight ships, right? <laughs> um, and all all of this. Um, uh, it's a confluence, all of these factors. And so we are seeing, you know, cost push inflation. We're seeing actually a cost push inflation. It's a combination of actually, you know, uh, 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 demand pull and cost push because demand is also very high. Um, so we are seeing, you know, inflation. And this brings us to... Um, now, uh, this brings us to um, uh, the, the, the question of, so what is a, a high inflation? Uh, I mean, from what do we consider that inflation to be high? Now, let's think about this. I think, uh, yeah, it's on. So the pen is on. So and, um, just like re you remember this relationship, um, Nominal interest rate is real interest rate plus inflation, right? So that means, you know, uh, real interest rate is nominal interest rate minus inflation, right? So, the, you know, uh, we all know that there can be negative, in, uh, negative real interest rate, and there is an incentive for negative interest rate. Um, but you know, also uh, think about uh, think of it this way. We can think of also um, uh, uh, let's G G is the uh, uh, economic growth rate. Let's think about G and uh, pi is inflation, right? So now. Uh, Economic growth rate is uh, simply, it can be measured by uh, GDP of this year divided by GDP of last year. Isn't that right? I mean, if you're already at the end of this year, we can, we have GDP data, right? Uh, and then we can divide it by that. Or we can find the economic growth rate between last year, 2020 and 2019. Because, you know, we already have data for 2020, right? And then we have data for 2000, <clears throat> 2019. All you have to do is, um, for example, GDP T minus... GDP at time t minus one or oh, what happened divided by oh. divided by GDP at time t minus 1. This will give you the growth rate at time t, right? This is simple. I mean, this is like, you know, our when we calculated annual, you know, um, growth rate of, our, of the house value, right? So if you have GDP of 2020, this is GDP of 2019. And suppose we have also, uh, we calculate the uh, uh, inflation just like that. How do we calculate inflation? Of course. Ugh. CPI. Consumer Price Index, 
CPI at time t, let's say time t is 2020, minus CPI of time t minus 1, divided by CPI, Consumer Price Index. Time T minus one. This looks Okay, then you have, you know, inflation at time t. Now, our question is then, so then, you know, uh, there can be three scenarios, right? Uh, those three scenarios are growth rate, growth rate, economic growth rate is greater than uh, inflation or equal to inflation or less than inflation. Right? There are there can be three possible scenarios, right? So uh, which is you know so scenario one and then in this case uh, let's say uh, I don't know where the, what cell was, you know, um, selected, but you know, uh, uh, okay. If this is the case, something like this: economic growth rate is ten percent, and inflation is five percent. Now, if this is the case. 5 inflation is clearly not a very, uh, clearly, you know, not a, a low inflation. It's, you know, uh, quite a, a substantial inflation. But if the economy grew by 10%, will anybody even notice inflation? Will anybody? Huh? What does growth rate, economic growth rate of 10%? Now, if the economy grew, grew by 10%, that means, you know, a GDP grew by 10%. That means on average, on average, everybody's income grew by 10%. If everyone's income income grew by 10%, then you have 10% more purchasing power if there was no inflation, right? If the inflation is zero. But even if the inflation is 5%, then your purchasing power is still, uh, your purchasing power still gained by 5%. Isn't it right? Hmm? If your income was $10,000 last year, this year your income is 11, uh, $11,000, dollars 11 k Inflation is 5%. Uh, so that, that drops the, uh, uh, you know, um, your purchasing power by 5%. So, um, you may not, if the Coke was, you know, if Coke was, you know, uh, a dollar last year with $11,000, you could buy not, if there was no inflation, you could buy 11,000 bottles of Coke this year, if there was no inflation. But if there was, you know, 5% inflation, Coke is a dollar five, but you have $11,000. You divide $11,000 by 1.05. You will see, you still get more Coke, right? More bottles than last year. Isn't that right? Because last year your income was 10K. You could buy uh, 10,000 bottles of Coke last year with last year's income. With this year's income, you still, although it may not be 11,000 bottles because there was inflation, right? But you still, you can still buy more than 11,000 bottles. 
you can still buy more than 10,000 bottles. I'm, I, that's what I'm saying. You understand? Huh? Everyone. Do you follow so far? Uh, sort, of. Know, sort of. Yeah, mm -hmm. sort of too as well. Sort of, <laughs> sort of. I mean, this is a very straightforward logic. Think about it. If your income grew by 10%, uh, and now, uh, but inflation was only 5%, you can still buy more with $11,000, you can still buy more than what you could buy last year because last year your income was only 10,000. Now, second scenario is, and this will be quite obvious, growth rate is equal to inflation. That means, you know, um, economy grew by 10%. Inflation was also 10%. Then think about it. Your income last year, right? Ten K. Your income this year uh, 11K. This is your nominal income. But you know, in terms of purchasing power, uh, if there was no inflation, uh, your, your purchasing power will be uh, exactly 11k meaning you know you can still buy you can buy 11,000 bottles of coke right but there was 5% inflation so after adjusting for inflation your real real income let me write it this way because you know it's This is nominal, nominal income, real income will be, uh, it's so hard to write. I, I mean, you know, um, it's not writing, it's drawing with mouse, you know, it's mouse drawing, right? 11K over one. 0.05. Okay, whatever this may be, that's the uh, uh, real, you know, number of, you know, uh, bottles of Coke, right? And then, uh, if there was, uh, and you got to understand that when Economic growth rate is 10%. What does that mean? Uh, on average, everybody's income uh, grew by 10% on average. Okay, you can follow that, right? Of course, you know, uh, uh, the reality maybe somebody's income grew more. Somebody's income grew 20%. Somebody's income grew only by 5%. Somebody's income may not have grown at all, right? Or somebody's income may have dropped. But if you lost your job, right? Of course, your income must have dropped. But the bottom line is, it's average, right? On average, everybody's income grew 10%. That's what is meant by economic growth rate of 10%, right? Now, and thus in second scenario, in second scenario, um, your um, the point is uh, in the first scenario, the point is. No matter, no matter, uh, no matter whether there was five percent inflation or despite five percent inflation, despite five five percent inflation, nobody will cry out inflation. I mean, somebody maybe, but you know, generally on average, no one will uh, cry cry out inflation because 
you're better off. You're better off than last year. Isn't it right? Since your purchasing power is greater than last year, right? You can still afford to buy more. You're better off. That's, you know, I don't need to, uh, 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 I don't need to give additional explanation. When I, when I say you're better off, that means you're wealthier. They, that means you, uh, you can purchase more. Right? Isn't that clear? Right? Everyone? Well, what, yeah. Now a question. What will happen with the, like, you see, like the prices and wouldn't they go up as well? If inflation was to happen? Yeah, look, look, so I'm going, I'm going by scenario by scenario. Scenario one, uh, inflation was only 5%. But in scenario two, right, in scenario two, uh, inflation was also 10%. Then what does that mean? Inflation is simply wiping out, so inflation is simply wiping out the growth in your income. Isn't that right? It simply offsets. So in this case, your nominal income – oh, what did I do? <laughs> I saved that file. Your nominal ah, – your nominal income this year, you know, in year T, is now 11 still 11k but f real income after adjusting for your real income after adjusting for inflation we know what it's going to be Eleven K after adjusting for inflation, it will be exactly ten K. So in other words, in um, although nominally you have your income is eleven K, but what you can buy with eleven K is still ten thousand bottles of Coke because Coke is all you know now uh, everything is ten percent more expensive because of inflation. Coke is now a dollar ten, right? So you can buy um, the purchasing power of your 11K is just like 10K last year, what 10K could buy last year. Does that make sense? And if this is the case, some people may complain and some people may not, right? Some people may say, um, well, because of the uh, inflation, Although my uh, paycheck went up by 10%, uh, there is hardly anything I can buy more. I mean, with $11,000, uh, it's not like, you know, uh, I can only buy as much as what I could buy last year. Right? Makes sense? That's, that's the scenario two. So, so some people may complain, some people may not. But now, scenario three. inflation is greater than the economic growth rate. So then it's like your paycheck grew by 10%, but the inflation was like 15%. Now, if you want to say something to me, please, you know, uh, uh, speak, uh, speak out because, you know, I cannot see the chat box. This is what I can see, you know. Um, so um, now think about it. Nominally, your nominal income this year is 11K. But real income will have to be, you know, um, ah. real income at time t will be
11k over, you have to adjust it for inflation and it's going to be what? So let's run, you know, let me do uh, using the, uh, uh, where's clear? Okay, clear, clear. So 11,000, right? Divided by 1.15, and it's going to be like 9,565 to 2. Nine thousand. What was that? Five six five. Point. Yeah. Look, this is. Then you know when inflation is greater than the economic growth rate then this is uh, what happens to the purchasing power of your nominal $11,000. Your nominal $11,000 will be able to purchase only nine, what $9,605 could buy last year. Right? Does that make sense? Hmm? So question, if this question, professor. Yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on. If this is the case then, Everybody will cry out, cry out inflation. Every because every everybody feels the uh, pinch of inflation, right? Nominally eleven thousand, you you earn more than last year, but then you know what you can afford to buy is actually you know less than what you could afford to buy last year. It's actually only what nine thousand five six five could buy last year, right? So everybody will cry out inflation. Yes, a uh, question. Who had the question? Yes, Professor. So in the second example, right, you said it was 10% mm -hmm. inflation. So if things cost more, isn't your purchasing power going down because you're not making more than the amount of no. inflation? No, no, no. In the in the second example, your uh, your income grew also 10%, right? And from, then from the inflation was... Isn't the oh, you mean the last example, last yeah, example scenario. Yeah, in this case, yeah, uh, of course, that's, that's, that was the conclusion. You can, although nominally your income went up, right, you can afford to buy less than what you could buy last year. Okay, that's, right? that's what I was trying to ask you. Thank you. Yeah, 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 you're welcome. Yeah, I mean, we did, you know, just... We did thought experiment, and through the thought experiment, you know, it was clearly, you know, uh, uh, proven, right? Uh, uh, mathematically, uh, what is the case, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, when the inflation is greater than uh, economic growth rate? So think about it. What is the high inflation? Well, if the inflation is greater than the economic growth rate, then that's already high inflation because everyone will uh, cry out inflation, right? Because your purchasing power, you are nominally, you your income is nominally, you get a better, you know, uh, bigger paycheck, but what you can afford to buy is less than last year. Then that's, you know, inf uh, inflation, right? But if your economic growth rate is greater than the inflation, then nobody will say inflation. Only the economist will uh, notice. Only the economist, uh, if this is the case, now uh, let's think about it. Uh, we'll just, you know, uh, uh, 11,000 divided by 1.05. And you still get, I mean, um, uh, what $11,000 can buy is like, you know, uh, what? Uh, what was that? Uh, 10,476, uh, 476, 20. 10,467.20. All right. Oh, 
476, I'm sorry, 476, so. So um, nominally your income went up, but maybe you uh, uh, in real goods you may you may not you know afford to uh, buy as much as you know uh, what 11k can buy, but you you can you are better off than last year. You're still better off than last year. So uh, and uh, what your 11 11k can buy is um, like what you could by uh, what, you know, uh, 1,000, um, oh, no, no, not 1,000, but not, uh, I think some, I missed something, 10,000, I'm sorry, 10,000, what 10,000, uh, $10,476 uh, could buy last year. So nobody will cry out inflation, only the economists will notice. What about what about deflation? How does quantitative easing play into that? Yeah, deflation. Um, deflation is you know uh, when inflation is negative, right? And when economy is shrinking. So in deflation, uh, the same same amount of money, right? Same amount of uh, money will um, uh, ten thousand will uh, have more purchasing power. 10,000 will have more purchasing power. So you simply, simply, you know, uh, in this, extending this example, let's say, think about the deflation, case of deflation. So uh, let's even, uh, economic growth rate is greater than inflation anyway, because inflation is negative. Let's say that's 0%, let's say, Economic growth rate is zero percent, but you know uh, uh, there was a uh, negative ten percent, right? Inflation is negative. That's deflation. Negative ten percent, just to make it you know drastic. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. I will have to. These <laughs> things. Okay. So then you know. Um, Your income, nominal income, 2000 this year, let's say 2020, nominal income. Uh, of course, you know, uh, this year is 2021. Why to, uh, look, this year isn't, this this year hasn't ended yet. So you don't know this year's, you know, uh, annual income, but we have last year. Uh, so uh, nominal, because of zero growth, uh, nominally it is, you know, um, 10K, your income didn't grow from last year because 0%. Uh, making adjustment for inflation, real income will be Ten K divided by one plus negative ten, a negative uh, point one. Right? We know it's then point nine, right? It's going to be point nine. So uh, I don't have to. Uh, let me just. Ah, why is it going all the way up? Uh, it's going to be point nine. And then it will be greater than one thousand uh, ten thousand. And the purchasing power of your ten K will be like eleven thousand something. Uh, we can just, you know, uh, eleven thousand. 
Yeah, 10.4. Uh, we come to 11,011. <laughs> Right? So when there is deflation, then the your purchasing power, the purchasing power of your money goes up. So you might think, oh, that must be a wonderful world. Uh, because price levels, you know, in other words, price levels are low, price level is low. So with the same amount of money, you can afford more. But you think that's a wonderful world. No, it's not a wonderful world. This is a this is a uh this is a um uh this is a terrible world. Why? Uh, look, um, although the purchasing power of money may be uh, greater, but then economy, that means, you know, deflation means the economy is shrinking. Um, uh, sh economy shrinking means what? P uh, the plants are closing down, right? Plants are closing down. Uh, workers lose jobs, right? And if you are lucky enough uh, to maintain this 10K, of course, your purchasing power is greater. But since, you know, uh, uh, supply side of the economy is downsizing, right? They lay off workers, plants close down. There aren't goods to buy. There are less goods to buy, right? There will be less goods to buy. And if there are less goods to buy, then, you know, uh, although uh, mathematically this is the purchasing power of your money, uh, you won't be able to buy anything. And even if you find something, uh, then because of, you know, uh, that scarcity, the price will, you know, you will have to pay a higher price. And as people lose jobs, economy, um, uh, uh, plants close down, economy uh, shrinks and in next may be you right next can be you and the, also the thing is uh the the speed of the uh, uh plants closing down will accelerate first of all uh look price uh, initially price goes price level goes down initially um uh price level goes down um because, you know, of, you know, deflation, right? Price level goes down. And then uh, what do you think? When price level goes down and you, you, you have money, I mean, you still have, you're still, you're not laid off. You still have job, you have income. But are you going to uh, make a big ticket purchase like, you know, cars or, you know, um, uh, refrigerator or whatever, you know, uh, uh, computers, you know, are you going to... Uh, buy them uh, now? Hmm? No, so that's probably no, where really. the quantitative easing comes in, right? You have to, the government has to start. No, 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 don't, 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 don't worry about that yet. Don't worry about that yet. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, it, when, when quantitative easing comes in, right? Then you know uh, the the uh, economy will pick up and you know uh, inflation will go up. But then uh, things are getting more expensive, right? If inflation picks up, things are getting more expensive. Why would you uh, hold off, you know, until then? Uh, but don't you know uh, disregard you know uh, you know economic policy? I mean, let's say you are just a. Uh, 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 you're not economic policy maker. <laughs> Don't think about economic policy. Just as a, a simple consumer, just as a simple consumer, as you watch the price prices go down, are you going to uh, 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 are you going to uh, buy the car today? Or I mean, let's say, will you buy it next month or will you buy it today? If you have to buy a car, will you buy the car next month or will you buy it today? As you see prices going down. Probably wait because then yeah, go down yeah. more. 
Exactly. You will postpone. You you will postpone your purchase because uh, you see the price level going down. So obviously, you know, uh, you will uh, if there is a big ticket item uh, that you must purchase, you will postpone that purchase, right? But postponing the purchase will make the uh, uh, manufacturers. Uh, 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 decrease more. Why? Because uh, the cars are not selling now. Cars are not selling now because people are holding off their uh, purchase. So what do they do? They will cut down on car production. They will, even the inventory of the uh, stockpile of inventory of the cars now aren't selling. So they the only way they can sell is by you know uh, uh, you know cutting down the price. And even you know, cutting down the price, they are not buying cars because uh, consumers expect the price will go down next month. So uh, if they, the car, even the uh, current inventory of cars are not selling, then they will not produce cars uh, next month. In other words, future production will be downsized. And as future production of cars are downsized, what happens? Uh, they lay off workers. Workers get laid off, so this will, uh, and then you know uh, they can't spend money. We'll have a negative feedback into the economy. So the economy is now in downward spiral, right? Makes sense. The economy goes into downward spiral. That's why this is not a wonderful world. This is a terrible, terrible world. I'm pretty sure I heard like somewhere that the that the, um, the Japanese Japanese are dealing with this problem, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they had, you know, lost decade. 1990s, that was their lost decade. And um, uh, it's a, uh, uh, it's, in economics, it's called paradox of thrift. Paradox of thrift. And paradox of thrift is, you know, exactly uh, what, you know, uh, describes Japan. You know, they don't spend, they want to, uh, um, uh, even though they lower the interest rate to uh, uh, zero percent, they don't borrow. They don't borrow because uh, it's it's cultural. It's embedded, you know, uh, in their culture. Uh, borrowing is, you know, like a sin, uh, stigma or sin. So they don't borrow, even if the interest rate is. If they don't borrow, what happens? You know, first of all, their uh, housing market suffers. I mean, no new home construction. Right, existing homes. Of course, in Tokyo, still, you know, real estate is very expensive because it's because you know there are there is so much population. There's a lot of demand for real estate, so the real estate is still um, afloat. Uh, but the thing is, you know, um, if you don't spend, now that's what the uh, 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 national economy, macroeconomy, is di different from uh, personal uh, economy personal finance. Why? First of all, when you lose your job, uh, the, the, the head of the household, your father lost the job, and the whole family will have to tighten the belt. They will say, you know, uh, your father lost job. Your mother says your father lost job. So we will, we will have to cut down on everything from today. That's the only way we can, you know, uh, uh, we have to hunker down. We'll have to stretch our, uh, uh, we'll have to stretch our, um, um, uh, how do you, we'll have to stretch our spending as, I mean, uh, our pennies, we'll have to stretch our pennies as much as we can. Uh, you have to save and, you know, you have to be thrifty to um, survive the uh, recession, right? I mean, uh, in the hard times, but if everyone is thrifty, Let's say the, the whole economy, uh, throughout the whole economy, uh, uh, because of recession, everyone, of course, deflation is also uh, uh, comes together with recession, right? If everyone, every household, every family, everyone uh, cuts down on their spending, um, then it's going to be a downward spiral because my in the economy my spending is your income and your spending is my income isn't it right and if we all cut down on spending your income goes down my income goes down everybody's income goes down everybody's worse off right but so then what can you do i mean during the uh, 
a recession? Shouldn't we cut down on spending? Um, uh, that's called thrift, you know, uh, paradox of thrift, you know. Being thrifty doesn't necessarily help you get out of the recession. So, but, you know, how can you force anybody to spend more during the recession? Everybody's, you know, uh, tightening up their... So that's where the government comes in, right? The government must, you know, um, like fiscal policy, you know, in, a, in other words, you know, uh, uh, have you heard of, you know, Joe Biden's, you know, $3.5 trillion, you know, infrastructure bill? Huh? Have you heard of yeah, it? Yeah, I heard of it. Yeah. Why, why $3.5 infrastructure bill? By, you know, it's a public project. By, through the public project, they provide jobs. This is where the government has to come in because uh, companies downsize, companies close down, plants close down, they close. Then, you know, from the private sector, there is no, uh, there is no more jobs that can be generated from the private sector, and everybody is, you know, uh, uh, shrinking their spending. Then, you know, economy will go downward spiral, go down the downward spiral. Then the government must kick in with the uh, uh, public projects, like, you know, um, that was what New Deal uh, project was back in the 1930s, you know, when Franklin Roosevelt um, initiated uh, that launched the pro you know uh, the project. Uh, it's mainly public work. Now it's um, in those um, so uh, uh, infrastructure like you know bridges, you know tunnels, you know uh, road, uh, and a lot of you know uh, social infrastructure in the U.S. has dilapidated over uh, decades because you know even in the early 1990s it was wonderful, great, but you know. The last time I saw U.S. infrastructure uh, in good shape was like early 1990s. And since then, everything deteriorated because there was no reinvestment in the social infrastructure. And they are doing it. They are trying to uh, uh, do that. That's where the uh, uh, you know, public sector comes in, right? They have, uh, but then this uh, Republicans are always, you know, criticizing, you know, big government. You know, a big government means, you know, big tax, right? To uh, how do you fund the uh, 3.5 trillion dollar public project? What what the Democrats are saying, uh, what the Democrats are proposing is by raising taxes on the top one percent wealthy. If you don't make more than four hundred thousand dollars a year, your tax doesn't go up a penny. Right. So by increasing taxes on top one percent, they can provide, you know, uh, 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 the funding for all that, you know, infrastructure uh, project, three point five trillion. But, you know, then Republicans are against it. Because, why? Because Republicans are lobbied by Republicans basically work for not for the working class. They are. They work for the uh, top 1% wealthy and giant corporations. And Republicans passed $1.7 trillion during, you know, uh, Trump administration. Republicans tax passed a $1.7 trillion tax cut for top 1% wealthy. And when they give top 1%, you know, uh, you know $1.7 trillion tax cut to, you know, uh, Top one percent, they uh, and you know giant corporations, they never say it is you know too expensive. But when they say uh, you know when uh, you know um, they uh, uh, Democrats you know um, uh, propose a three point five dollar trillion dollar infrastructure project, then they say it's too expensive. We can't afford it. How can they say you know this is and then. Um, basically, you know, this is what the, uh, the, the platform difference in the, uh, their, you know, ideological platform and economic platform, you know, uh, and all those, you know, red states, those, you know, Republican states, you know, red states, they are doing very poorly, right? In terms of what, you know, uh, vaccination, I mean, uh, pen, uh, uh, you know, COVID, you know, uh, uh, break, breakout, you know, uh, COVID, you know, uh, breakout uh, rates, per percentage of people diagnosed, you know, um, Republicans, they, all those red states, 
It's very high. Statistics are very high. Uh, in the blue states, you know, um, uh, vaccination is high. Uh, vaccination rate is high. And outbreak, outbreak of, you know, uh, 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 COVID-19 cases are low. Right? And then uh, there's a lot of, you know, uh, we, we are already out of time. There's a lot of things to... Uh, uh, they think, you know, look, uh, uh, and uh, southern states, you know, are generally red states, and southern states are generally all, you know, evangelist, you know, a lot of, you know, um, evangelist states, you know, uh, Christians, you know. Uh, evangelical. Even, yeah, evangelical uh, uh, Christians, and uh, they, they think they are very conservative, and Trump represents conservative conservatism. No, no, no. You have to separate in the U.S. Uh, econ um, uh, co conservative and liberal. There are two different things: socially liberal and socially conservative, and economically liberal in terms of economics. Economically liberal and conserv economically conservative. They don't go together. I mean, economic liberal is not uh, socially liberal. Okay, actually, you know. Uh, Economic liberal is actually siding together with, you know, um, uh, socially uh, conservative. I mean, uh, they are not, it's not just because you're economically liberal, that doesn't mean you are uh, socially liberal. Social liberal, and just because you're socially conservative, uh, that doesn't mean you are economically liberal. Uh, to totally different things. We don't have time for this. So uh, I'm going to have to uh, uh, leave you here because it's already uh, 3.25. So <laughs> the class is only until like 3.15. So you guys owe me 10 minutes next time. Okay? I will. Uh, so, uh, God bless, Professor. God bless. Hey, all right. All right. I have a question right. about the uh, textbooks. Like mine came in the yeah, mail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are we supposed to do with them again? Okay. Now I I um I know you uh, a lot of you haven't got the textbook yet so um I'm going to post uh I'm going to post uh, something in the announcement right because um uh, uh we're not going to use the the uh chapter problems until we get to a uh, a topic 2 so we have some time so I'm going to post something in the announcement all right all righty so uh, uh I'm going to uh, I'm going to stop recording and uh, 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 sign out. All right. Thank you, Professor. All right. You, I'll see you guys you got the next. return on investment thing for the homework. All, All right. Yeah, I'll see you. Professor, yeah. do we have any homework? Take care. Huh? Do we have any homework? Oh, any, any uh, homework? Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, there is no, um, there is a, a practice test. Okay, I see okay. Uh, there's a practice test um, uh, due this weekend. So please, you know, uh, uh, read the announcement, please. All right, read everything no in the announcement, okay? All, All right, righty. No I'll see you guys on uh, Thursday, okay? Thank All you right, so Professor. Much. Have a good day. Yeah, okay, take care, Eva. Take care, everyone. All righty, take care. Uh, signing out.